already. So with the tuning aspect, uh, there are different ways that you can tune. Uh, there are physical tuners that you, can uh, that you can buy that you can clip on. Uh, I'm gonna put it in the chat too. And there's one that I really use all the time and that's called Guitar Tuna. So you can download this with your smartphone or device. Uh, even though it says guitar tuna, there's a tuning also for ukulele, guitar, and bass. So I use that all the time on my smartphone. And it pops it up and it uses your microphone. But since a couple of, might not, of us not have smartphones, we also have a website alternative. And I'll put that in the chat too, and I'm going to share this screen. So this is Ukebuddy, a website that has a bunch of information on ukulele, but we're gonna use it right now just for uh, tuning aspects. So let me go ahead and share that screen with you. Everybody can see okay? Alrighty, so this Uke Buddy has a couple of different tabs on the website, but we really just want the tuner. So with this, we can hit, with tuning, we always wanna start kind of with the one that's closest to the ceiling. So that's just number one. So I'm gonna turn on my microphone here and we can strum there. And it also corresponds with the pegs that are in your ukulele. So the one that's G, that's the one that's closest to us here. So you can kind of look at it like that. So with this tuning mechanism, we can hit that first, uh, that fourth string there. And that's, close to a G. This website is not super accurate, but it is a, if you don't have a, a smartphone, I think it still works pretty well. So we can see that we're pretty close to that G. I'm talking to and it picks up on the notes of my voice. So that's what it also is kind of going all over the place. But let's say we don't, we don't have that string too in that fourth string. So let me detune it for a second. It's a little too high. So it's gonna say that G sharp. One of the things that I like about guitar tuna or tuners is that it will let you know if you're too high or if you're too low. So it'll neither give you a super like, uh, bring it down or bring it up. This website doesn't do that. But let me tune it down. get that there. Same thing with that C there. Same thing with that E. And same thing with that A. With tuning, if you're too high, it's better to go a little lower than intended and then go up. So let's say you're too high and you just go down to G. Go a little down and then go up because it's going to start losing that tension if you just go from down to the right tuning. So those are two, this is a great website for that too, at least if you don't have a smartphone a device or if you don't have a physical tuner. I'm gonna give everybody one minute to kind of check their tunings. Um, but at least for myself, I have terrible perception of, <laughs> of, of notes. So I'm always very dependent on uh, my devices for tuning. So that's just to have it ready and it should sound like. You'll kind of, as you develop your ear, you'll tell if something is really, really off. Alrighty, so that is tuning. Uh, any questions on tuning? Let me go ahead and cover over. Any questions? Nope, alrighty. Let's go ahead and talk about chords. Chords make the world go round and everything else too. So let me go ahead and share this. I will also share this in the chat. This is a worksheet, a what you call it, a chord guide. There you go. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, it's a little fuzzy. So let me open up the other one that doesn't look so fuzzy.
There we go. Can everybody see this okay? Perfect. Alrighty, so starting off, let me get the chat real quick. Yes, perfect. So this is the most basic chord chart in general. We have our majors, which are generally called in very vague terms, the happy chord, the happy counting chords. And then we have the minor chords, the kind of more sad sounding chords. And those are represented by the lowercase m's in the after the chord names there. So we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then A minor, B minor, C minor. I don't see the website or the apps. Do you see the chord, um, the chord that I shared here? Yes, all right, so we are here now. So since we named our strings, now we need to name our fingers. Is anybody here left-handed? <laughs> All right, so this is gonna be a little bit different since, uh, do, you, do you strum with your right hand or left hand? Your right hand, okay, then we are good. Uh, there are other ukuleles that are basically mirrored or swapped so that you play with your right hand and then you strum with the left. But this is, even Jimi Hendrix who played uh, both and he just switched around, so this is the more common one. Alrighty, so let's look over here at this A minor here. So there's a couple of things here. So we have this very first line on the right side, the very right side. That's a representation of our first string. So that's the string that's closest to our to the ground. After that, we have the second string there. That's the string that's closest to after one. And then after that, we have the third. And then this line here, all the way to the left is our fourth string. And I was talking about mem uh, numbering our fingers. Since we are all playing right-handed style, our index finger is gonna be considered the first finger. Our middle is the second. Ring is the third. Pinky is the fourth. So we can see very, let me see if I can zoom in even more. There we go. We can see a faint number two in that dot over there. So what that means is that we have to fret our fourth string with our second finger, which is our middle finger, in the second fret of the fourth string. So this is kind of how it looks like. So we have that middle finger fretting on the second fret, so that's right between the two bars in that fourth string. And the way I'm kind of fretting is, I'm gonna make a little press here in my finger, is like it's almost right above the fingernail. That's where we want it. So this is the part two where if you like your fingernails on your left hand, that's gonna be an issue. Because <laughs> if you are pressing down and if you have long fingernails, that means the wood is going to hit um, your fingernail. So we have that there. So we have that fretted there. So same thing with the ukulele. A lot of the, the body is the thing that's really carrying it. And not really this uh, hand, but I think we can still start off here. There's a couple of straps, at least for... Uh, more comfort that you can put over and clip on here because ultimately you want your left hand to be as free as possible when moving around and not really too focused on holding uh, the instrument. Yes, I will put that in the chat right now. Let me put the, the image file there so everybody can download that to their computer. So that's what we have. So after we put our finger there in that second fret of the fourth string, then we can just do a strum of all the strings right there. So kind of strumming with the side of my thumb, at least in the beginning. And you really want to focus on strumming each string with the same force, or else it sounds a little like 
one string might be too focused. So chords are really about strumming all this, all this, uh, all the strings at times with one nice fluid motion. So I kind of want everybody to practice that. And let me know if it sounds like a little clanky. Uh, you'll want to make sure that your fingers are kind of have a little curve because you don't want the rest of your hand to touch the other strings. So that's why kind of we develop this kind of curve. And my thumb is kind of lightly hugging the back of the neck here so that it really enforces that curb. A lot of these chords will have this kind of curb shape to them. Let's see, any problems with that? Looking around, looking around. Alrighty, so let's see uh, another chord. So that's just one chord right there, right? So these are probably the easiest chords since they only involve uh, one uh, finger. Oh yeah, so with the chord guide, you can just copy and paste that link. Oh, I sent that privately. I didn't send that to everybody. There we go. Let me send that to everybody. Perfect, thank you, chat. So that's just basically that simple chord right there. So let's go ahead and move to two finger chords. So if we go hover over to this F here on the left side, we can see some similarities between the A minor and F chord. We can see that there's already that two. So we just need to add our index finger on that first fret of the second string. So you can keep that finger there and then you can just plop your index finger on the second string of the first fret and keep that finger right there. And this is kind of a good test too though, so to make sure that your hands are not covering the rest of the, uh, the strings there. So you, anytime you are practicing a new chord too, you want to go kind of one by one slowly. Just to make sure that everything sounds bright, everything is not clanky, that it sounds good. So we have that. Uh, let me go into kind of something a little bit more advanced here with this F, uh, this B minor right here. We can see kind of this smiley face on the, and there's three ones, one, one, one. So what that means that this is a bar chord. A bar chord consists of us pressing sometimes a whole row of frets with just one finger. So for this particular one, that one indicates our index finger, and we are going to press down the first, second, and third string there, and kind of just press it. So this is kind of where I do a little pinch from the back two in the beginning to give it some support. And you can kind of move your finger around to get comfortable. And, some, and you'll realize too that you really don't need that much pressure in your hands to fret um, a note there. So with it, I'm gonna put my finger here. You can see that it's fretted on the second fret of the first, second, and third string. And once I check that they all sound clean, then I can add my ring finger and put it on the fourth fret of the fourth string. So this is kind of a, a little stretch. So you can see that my, my middle finger kind of goes towards the, uh, the bar just to give it that extra support. And with any new chord, we want to go one by one. But this is really a challenge though. So I would, I would probably suggest <laughs> in the beginning working on the ones that only have one finger and two fingers. So let's see, for example, uh, 
or the C chord here that only has one, two. So you can practice this one too. So that C chord is on the first string, on the third fret, and we use our ring finger. So it kind of looks like that. It's very similar to that A minor chord. So we have that C. So we are only fretting with our ring finger, the first string that's closest to the ground, that third fret. And it's just one nice. one right there. Alrighty. Any questions on how to read this chord guide? So there's many different versions of this, but I like this one particularly because it lets you know um, which finger to use in which situation. But I would really focus on the ones that are one finger, two fingers, and then you can go ahead and do the ones that are uh, three finger ones. So let's say, for example, once we practice this F, then we can go ahead and practice that D minor just because we already have these two in place and we just need to put that ring finger there on the uh, third string second fret. Alrighty, how's everybody doing? So far, alrighty. Perfect, so we have chords. What do we do with them? What are they for? Many, uh, a lot of popular music and rock, pop, or anything basically you hear besides other different types of music uh, are kind of counted in four time. So what that means, or common time. So th what that means is there is four beats per bar. So we're gonna transition now to kind of strumming. But to kind of get a general feel, most music is counted like one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And we use this count to kind of keep us in check with the music. So let me go ahead and share uh, these strumming patterns. Alrighty, can everybody see okay this one? Do a little bigger, perfect. Everybody see okay? Alrighty. So since we kind of went over those one, two, three, four, so we're gonna focus on the very first line. So these are all just downbeats and they're all a single strum. So there's a one and a capital D at the bottom. So how we count that is, we count that again as one, two, three, four, and they're all downstream. So let's say we are playing our C chord, and that again is the ring finger on the third fret in the first string. How we do that is we count it like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And it would be a little not exciting if we just stay on the C chord for five minutes. So there's a lot of songs that have chord progression. So what that means is that one chord goes into the other chord. So let's say, for example, we have that C chord there and we're gonna play it for two bars. So what that means is each bar is composed of four beats. So we're gonna play that basically eight times, and then we're gonna switch to a different chord by the time we get to that third bar. So let's say I'm doing C, and I'm gonna switch to an A minor, which is the fourth string on the second fret. So that's that one finger transition to the other finger transition. So how you would count that would be one, two, three, four, that's one bar, one, two, three, four, and then we switch to one, two, three, four, one, two, three, 
and then we can switch again. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that's about strumming patterns. So it's basically making sure that you are transitioning very cleanly between two chords. So that's kind of where also the, the chord guy comes in handy where you can practice going from one chord to another. So let me, before that, let me put this chart in the chat so that everybody can have it. So everybody, already. So that's just the most basic strumming pattern that there is in 4-4, four, four. unless you just do one, two, three, four, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, three, four. But I would really recommend starting with that two, three, four, because it also starts working your, your right hand a little bit more. Uh, any questions on the first one before I go ahead and touch upon the, uh, the second one? Anything? Alrighty, let me give it a second. Okay. So that's just the basic downbeats. So let's go ahead and read the second line. So we have the very similar, we have the one, two, three, four with the capital D below it. And now we have these U's and plus signs. So these are our ands. So how you would just vocally count the second line would be one and two and three and four and and it starts again one and two and three and four and and the u's are upstrums so so far we've just been doing downstrums but now we're going to focus on upstrums so you can kind of practice that right now with no chord shapes right here and just go up with the side of your thumb. Something that's a little different than down strums and up strums, when we're strumming down, we're usually strumming all the strings. But when we go up, let's just try to just strum the first two strings. This will take a little bit of practice, but this is just because uh, it gives it a little nicer space when you're doing a bunch. So let's say I'm doing just down and ups, all fours. And now we do it without that everything. It's a little nicer, lighter. It's not super claustrophobic. Uh, but with anything that we're practicing, remember to go slow because the point is accuracy and not speed in the beginning. So if you need to count one and two and three and four and you can go ahead and do so because it's really building that muscle memory and that finger right there and the control that you have over your thumb at least in the beginning. So let's say, for example, we're doing that C chord, we can go ahead and put again our ring finger on the first string of the third fret. It would just be one and two and three and four and, or one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. This, this last and is the kind of where the kind of trickiness between going between one chord or the other is because as soon as you hit that and in your C, you go down immediately on a new chord. And four and one and two and three and four and So 
this is again just between that C chord, which is the fourth fret of the first string and the A minor, which is the second fret of the fourth string. First, finger, <laughs> first string, <laughs> third fret. Numbers can get confusing after a little bit. <laughs> Any questions on downstrums and upstrums? Go ahead and over, nothing. Alrighty. So this kind of strumming patterns are, is really the seasoning to the food. So you can cook rice, but if you don't add salt and all the other good stuff, it's just gonna taste bland. So this is where the other lines go. So this is what the third and fourth line are. Their emphasis and give it space. Uh, picks, I'm gonna uh, answer a question. So somebody said, is it better with picks? With the ukulele, it's usually the hand that does the strumming just because mm. later once you uh, get a little bit more advanced, you can start to do more with uh, with your fingers. With guitar, it's a little different because uh, there's a lot of music that's really focused on rhythm. But this one is really more of a finger one. There are picks. Uh, I can go ahead and show you, but I really, I, I think that you can kind of start off with a hand just because you're learning to control the motion of your hand with it. And that, that comes, uh, later handy, handy later. Alrighty, so let me go over number three, just because it's kind of nice too. Um, so right here, how we count this would be one, two, three, four, and then one and two and three and four in. But sometimes our ability to count can mislead us. So we might count one, two, three, four, one and two and three and four and even though there's no ants, I would still count in your head or out loud the ants just to that you recognize that there is that empty space between those chords and it makes sense. Uh, let me go over here to number five. So you can see there's that capital D on number one but here we have some lower cases. So this is really the emphasize on the downbeat. So let's say we're playing again our C chord. We really wanna give it a nice one in, and then kind of a little lighter. So the lowercase letters are kind of uh, to be played a little not as hard, just because there's that emphasis on that nice in the beginning to let you know that you're right on the number one. And number six is very similar, but it's emphasized on the two instead of the one. It might seem very, very similar, but in the context of the music, it does make a big difference. Uh, I'm just gonna go down here. So once you kind of have um, the chords down, you can really focus on these other ones. So for example, this Latin strum, there's no down strum on the third. So that's really kind of tricky in the beginning because your finger already wants to go down. So be like one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and so that's why it's incredibly important to say it out loud and have a bottle of water next to you because you're going to be saying one and two and three and four a lot. But there's this all these different strumming patterns. So the chords and the strumming patterns are a perfect match to each other. Many songs have their own strumming patterns. And that's something that you just have to hear. And I'll show you this website too that specifically says, hey, this song has this strumming pattern that you can 
you can learn and follow along. But now you know that at least in the context of this bar, a four four is just counted as one and two and three and four and I believe watts are one and two and one and two and one and two and then one and two and three and one and two and three. And it really does um, switch things up a bit in the context. So I'm uh, with, uh, with the strumming question. Uh, right now I'm just using my, my thumb, kind of the side of my thumb to strum. then going up kind of the same but maybe a little bit of nail I, I think there's some videos too that do a little bit more with the um, with the index finger that's a little bit more advanced techniques um, but I also recommend really checking out YouTube videos, there's a lot of amazing stuff out there too, but you, now you can know the terminology uh, to search things. So strumming, chords, patterns, it's all good stuff there. Uh, but yes, in the beginning, just kind of do with your thumb right there. Any questions on strumming patterns here that we have? And again, you can find this all in the chat. Alrighty, no questions. Uh, one that I will mention here too is that offbeat single strum where it's just all one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and that's a very reggae strumming so when i go up i've kind of already stopped the ringing with the palm of my hand so that's just to instead of having this very airy kind of space filling sound that really makes a difference because you have this space and stop. So that's one technique that you can. So if you're combining that with a C and that A minor, you have that. But again, with anything that you're practicing in the beginning, go slow. So this, you would count this as one and two and three and four and you can count those ones as stops one i mean one and two and three and four and one all righty so last call for questions i'm gonna go ahead and share some resources about finding songs. Just because everybody has this, everybody's taste is similar and different too. So once you're practicing a song, you really want a song that you want to learn. So that's why I don't super assign homework, <laughs> but you can email me. I'll put my email in the chat too if you're interested in particular songs or artists, and then we can, we can talk about which songs are you're looking for. But this is the index finger. Yeah, uh, I had a question about index finger. You can also use your index finger. And I kind of do the downside, I think, of it. But I feel like in the beginning, I have a more control with my thumb than I do. But uh, let me show you this website that is user generated uh, for not only ukulele songs, but also uh, guitar songs and bass as well. So if you haven't heard, and I apologize for the ads last time too, there's some ads right there. But this is ultimate, the little slash uh, guitar.com. 
can't quite remember what that one is, but let me put that in the chat. So this is a user generated community that will put ukulele chords that you can search by artist or by title. So let's say for example, I'm looking for uh, hallelujah. I would just type in uh, hallelujah right there. And it also gives us the Jeff Buckley or the Leonard Cohen version. But let me just do hallelujah right there. So from here, there's gonna be different tabs on the top. So this is really where we can filter out. Let me zoom in a little bit more. There we go. We can filter out all the other different tabs and we just wanna see the ukulele chords. So let's just click on ukulele right there. Let me go up. So from here, we can see like any good social media, there's ratings. So we can see Jeff Buckley official version, but we really just want to focus on the one that has the most stars. So this one has 4,344 stars and the other ones don't really have the money. So what this means is that users use this uh, chord strumming thing here they have reviewed it and they say that this is probably going to be the best interpretation of that version. So we can go ahead and click on that link right there. And it will take us to the chord guide. So right at the very top, we can see the tuning. C, uh, G, C, E, A is our standard tuning. So we don't have to switch anything on our ukulele. We can see the chords that they used, and it looks very similar to the chord guy we were talking about here. But I don't, they said third fret on the one, so I don't know why they just didn't put the three right there. But there's that A minor we did, there's that F we did, there's that C we did, and maybe sometimes a new chord that we don't know about. This is kind of the nice aspect of Ultimate Guitar, that it has this strumming thing. So this is how it counts it. So this counts it in triplets, which is a little bit weird, but I just would focus on one, two, three, four. So let me see if I can share that sound. Let me see, let me know if you guys can hear this with a thumbs up. Was everybody able to hear that? You can give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. No, alrighty, let me see. Share the audio as well. There we go. Share computer audio. Alrighty, so you can hear this now. <laughs> It's a little fast. <laughs> so you can just do, and those ups are quick. One, two, three, one, two, one, and two, one, and I can't even remember two. Down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up. But in the beginning, you can just do one, three, And once you get kind of comfortable with the one, two, three, four, you can add those. But this is kind of a little bit more advanced. So in the beginning, I would really just focus on one, two, three, four. And now you can see why I decided to do a C and an A minor during the session, because that's basically the opening to Hallelujah. So you can hear that, that C right here, we have again our first string on the fourth fret, and we just do that one and one and two and three and four, and that's only one bar, and then go into the the way they do it is. And you can 
go back and forth there. So with these chord guides, they will let you know vaguely where the switch happens. So you can see that C on heard and core and secret that A minor. So that's where it switches the, the C to that A minor. And then you can see, but you really that F and then switches to that G and then to that C and to that G. So this is kind of important too when you're hearing the song, you're gonna start to recognize those switches. And it's as, as you are familiarize yourself more with the song that you wanna do, you'll be like, oh yeah, I need to go from here to here on this section because that just makes sense in switching. So for example, I'll do the very first line very, very slowly. So that'd be that I heard. Sometimes these uh, bars here, it's not going to stay, for example, in that do you in C to G. It's not going to stay in that C, one, two, three, four. It's going to stay in that C, one, two, go to G and go one, two again, because it's just half a bar or half a half a measure there. So this is a great website. Uh, if you don't know a chord, so let's say I'm not familiar with that G chord. You can hover over your mouse and it will display the chord there and it will also give you which number of fingers to use. So we have that one, two, three, and which fret and which uh, string we're gonna do. Let's say you're not familiar with that or you want a different version of that G, you can click here and it kind of toggles between 16 different ways to play G on the ukulele, but it's really the first one that's the most common. So I wouldn't bother too much with um, with going around here unless you wanted to explore a, a different uh, octave or version of G there. Same thing with that E minor we haven't played, but now we know that we put our index finger on the fourth string, our second finger on the second fret of the third string, and our ring finger on the second fret of the first string. Uh, any questions about Ultimate Guitar? It's a very, very big website, and it's again, it's all user generated. So always look out for the tabs or chords that have the most ratings, just because they'll be more re reviewed, like a, a big Wikipedia of, of songs. Any questions? You're welcome. And you can also use um, the Uke Buddy website we did in the beginning. And there are also chords. So if you want to learn new chords, like a C and C minor, you can go here too. But I don't particularly like this too much since it doesn't say which fingers to use in the beginning. So I would, I would focus more on the chord guide or the ultimate guitar website. The Veritone ukulele. Let me check out the tuning for that. That's a great question. There are four different types of ukuleles, and once you get to the bigger ones, the tuning is different. So the chord, the chords will be different. So instead of just doing um, ukulele chords, I would if you have a baritone, I would put baritone ukulele chords and chart on Google Images. I will I will put it also in the chat as well, but you will be able to see that there are different uh, chords that go with it. Let me see if I can find one that's looks pretty good. Yeah, 
I'll put this in the chat here for the baritone. If it's a gift, uh, somebody asked if their ukulele, what it was since it was a gift. Uh, if it's about regular size, it's usually going to be, oh, that's a pretty big one. <laughs> uh, that's a good question. I would, I would, I would research uh, probably on the inside of the ukulele, it will have um, the make if you're not if you're not too sure about it and then you can research it i don't think this one says which type of ukulele but if usually the bigger ones will have a different tuning just because they're way bigger i think it's also by size uh let me actually check that i think it is by size baritone ukulele uh size i think the size of the baritones is bigger yeah at least 30 inches the full size A tenor. Twenty six. I think it would still be that with the tenor ones. I think the tuning will still be um, if it's um, yeah, it's basic um, standard tuning. That's what I call it, standard tuning. Um, I don't think first stack would do ukuleles that are other than standard tuning. But the, the same principle still applies with, with strumming too. So you'll just have to learn a different way to play chords, which is nice too. Uh, kind of the, the, the appeal of the veritone ones is that they are way bigger and the frets are not as close together. So if you're not too comfortable with a smaller one, uh, you can search out a baritone. But I still recommend the standard one just because um, you'll get used to your fingers kind of being a little more close together. And if the uh, Somewhere Over the Rainbow guy can play this tiny instrument, I think we all can. <laughs> I can't remember his name right now, but um, fingers are no obstacle. And I wasn't gonna go and butcher his name either, so I apologize. <laughs> is, yes, is, thank you. I was thinking his full name. Uh, any other questions that we have here before we close out? Uh, let me put my email in the chat, so if anybody has any questions, uh, they're searching for a particular artist, uh, they want more resources about something different, um, you can ask me. So what kind is my uke? Okay, Colleen, where are you so I can see your uke? Let me search out, buddy. And you're not sure about your instrument so you can email me that. Uh, the next class is in two weeks. Um, I think uh, since I did two classes on strumming, I'm gonna focus this one on tablature or how to pick individual strings um, with, with something different. So there's kind of two sides of rhythm instruments. There's the kind of lead guitar side, that really picks up the melody and the kind of little riffs. And then there's the rhythm and strumming aspect of it. But yes, we will focus on uh, tablature next time. And that's two weeks. It's the same uh, Zoom link. So you don't have to find another Zoom link, um, but you can still find it on our website. And if you came here through Facebook, it will still be on that Facebook one too as well. Uh, and once again, thank you everybody. Uh, don't forget to let us know how we did. You can email me too if you wanted something different or how we did or just, I don't know, how you're feeling. <laughs> uh, 
All righty. Well, I hope everybody had a great weekend. Uh, I'm just going to leave this for um, one more minute so that uh, if anybody didn't get the chance to get my email, can do so. Um, I'll do it one more time. You're very welcome, everybody. I'll do it one more time. And you can also find, um, or just email us, I don't know. <laughs>